Yeah, g'day guys. Here's a quick video on my 12 volt battery swap over in my Kia EV5. As you can see, this is a King's 60 amp hour lithium battery. Now, it was never really my intention to even bother replacing the battery in the first place. Then, when I started reading all of the issues people were having with uh, previous models, i.e., um, the EV6 and the EV9, and then when I started seeing uh, similar issues with the EV3 and then a couple of issues with the EV5 regarding the um, not so much the ICCU fault because I think they've um, they've finally managed to solve that but um, I have seen a few people report dodgy um, 12 volt batteries um, from delivery and sometimes even within days of um, taking delivery of their new car I then thought hmm Maybe I should look into um, uh, replacing the 12 volt battery sooner rather than later. So you can see the uh, the little box there with the, the flashing blue light. That's just the Ancel uh, BM200 Bluetooth battery monitor. Now I had that connected to the original um, lead acid battery, and um, to be honest, everything was looking fine. There, it was looking so fine. I was I was tempted to not bother. Um, replacing the battery at all until last week the car was at the detailer slash protection um, treatment place and um, for the whole week and it only took a couple of days of those guys um, having the car in maybe accessory mode um, on and off during the day um, for the original 12 volt battery to um, throw up a warning uh, in the Kia app um, because I wasn't around the car, I couldn't monitor the voltage, but since I've got the car back, I realised that the voltage of this dropped way below 10 volts. So that's not good. That's not good enough. A couple of days of, of sort of abnormal um, behaviour um, to, to drain a battery well beyond um, its ability to then keep the car going or to start the car not good enough for me I'm sorry so my original intention was to replace this with an AGM battery so as you can see here the original battery this is not AGM this is just a very very inexpensive very small low capacity lead acid battery it's only 45 amp hour um, which is pretty dismal to be honest um, 370 amp um, cold cranking um, not that that really matters in an EV because it's not cranking an engine over but yeah 45 amp hour I thought yeah could do better than that so the AGMs were um, about um, 55 60 um, amp hour so I was sort of basing everything on that then when um, the battery did fail at the detailers I I thought, no, nope, that's it. So I started looking at the AGMs again, but then, all of a sudden, thanks to algorithms, I see Kings having a sale on their lithium batteries. And um, these are normally around about uh, $230 odd, which alone is actually a really, really good price. But um, the Kings sale had them at $149.95 or something like that. Um, I thought it was a one-off, so I quickly ordered one, and then I realized within a few days, the price was back down to that. So it sounds like they regularly go on sale for um, $150. So keep an eye out for that, because this is, as you can see, a 60 amp hour lithium battery. Very lightweight. Um, the only thing you have to worry about, I've only had this in for a couple of hours and a couple of test drives. The only things you have to really worry about with doing a lithium swap such as this is these batteries are really designed for um, uh, accessories like an auxiliary type thing like when you're camping they're designed to run fridges blah 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 so they don't come with battery posts so you have to purchase see the the, the brass goldy colored brass bit there with the silver hex screw in the top that's um, the battery post. You have to buy a set of those from anywhere. Um, I got these ones off Amazon for 
I think they were about six dollars um, so yeah well worth it they just screw into the top and then allow you to use standard battery terminals so the other thing that is a little um, it's not concerning I've just got to solve it is the fact that this battery is a little bit smaller than the original battery one of the big issues is it's not as tall so when you go to clamp it down with the original clamp it's out by about um, 30 odd mil um, 25 30 mil um, so what I've done temporarily because I'm not going to solve that perfectly today is I have just cut some foam and I've stuck it in the tray now this as you can see is quite squishy foam it's actually from a kneeling pad um, I've just done a very dodgy cut there this is 32 millimeters thick so um, that's what the battery is sitting on it's semi compressing it the battery is about six kilos which is half the weight of the original one and um, with the clamp on the top it actually tightens down quite well and is very secure however what I want to do is instead of um, instead of making up that height from the bottom of the battery I want this battery to sit down in that cradle so I'll make up that height by um, fitting some more solid rubber instead of foam to the bottom of this which will then press down on top of the battery and keep everything rock solid so the, they're really the only issues um, so I, I so far I haven't had any any problems the car seems happy with it um, the these um, lithium batteries have a BMS built into the top so um, you can basically charge them like a normal car battery you can um, discharge them like a normal car battery but everyone all over the internet and including the manual for this battery of course these are not cranking batteries these are not designed to sit under a bonnet now there's two reasons for that they're not designed to output the amount of current that a standard car battery um, can output for when you're cold cranking which is what this is all about these are not designed for that um, there are lithium batteries that are designed for cranking an engine but they are uh, about twelve hundred dollars was the quote I got and I'm not prepared to pay that much I'd rather just get an AGM version of that um, so that's one thing but of course it's an EV we don't need to crank an engine so that's that problem solved the next problem is not really a problem the next issue was the fact that these are not designed to go under a bonnet now the only reason they say that is from a heat perspective um, and mainly the heat from the engine so in a normal engine bay of course you're going to be seeing temperatures you know 80 80 or 90 degrees no problems at all um, uh, but in an EV it's going to be a lot cooler than that so I I looked up a whole heap of forums and a whole heap of data that people have um, contributed and it turns out that in the frunk section of many people's EV6s um, even in Arizona of all places which is um, in the middle of summer in Arizona um, on a very very hot day um, they only reached about 10 degrees higher than ambient um, within the engine bay so even if it was 40 degrees you're only looking at about 50 degrees in the engine bay these are designed to work up to 60 degrees without a problem so we've got about 10 degree leeway there so I consider that a good enough a good enough risk um, I don't think there's going to be any problems however um, I mean in Australia at the moment we're heading into winter in fact today is the first day of winter it's a very comfortable temperature um, but when it gets closer to summer the um, Bluetooth battery monitor here has a, um, a temperature sensor built in and I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on that. Um, so yeah, that's the, blue, that's the uh, lithium battery installed. Um, I didn't want to put that bracket on because it would cover up the, the label. I just wanted to prove that it was a King's lithium battery, cheap and cheerful from our lovely people at King's. I wish I got that for free, but <laughs> anyway, um, so while I got the lithium battery, even though the BMS in here allows you to treat it like a standard car battery when you're charging, I decided to get a, um, a lithium capable um, 
cheap car battery um, charger and because um, it can do all the other um, chemistries as well which you can see on the side there it does um, the lithium battery as well as AGMs and lead acids and a whole lot this charger on Amazon was I think $40.99 delivered um, being an Amazon Prime member um, and yeah so I whacked this on, on onto the battery that can do 15 amps and the batteries only come with I think 30% so I thought, no, I'm going to get it fully charged and then see what happens. It only took about oh, an hour um, for the battery to be fully charged by this charger. So absolutely fantastic. There's a couple of other things um, you'll have to be prepared um, with when you're swapping these batteries over. And that is, of course, your tools and Vaseline. So whenever you are putting a... Um, a terminal on a post of a battery it's always a good idea to put a thin coating of Vaseline around here it helps stop uh, corrosion bits and pieces um, I have had issues myself in a previous car um, that I didn't use Vaseline on and um, sure enough about 18 months later massive corrosion and then the car stopped in the middle of a very busy road while my wife was driving so lesson learnt I'll go back to using the Vaseline this is a godsend um, so we've got a 12 mil spanner for the bolts, um, the bolt and the nut that hold the um, battery clamp bracket on. So there's the, the bolt that goes into the front and then the nut goes into the threaded post at the back there, just down in there. Yep. Um, so that's all good like that. So yeah, um, I mean the car is working perfectly fine as it is. Um, but of course time will tell so if this is good for two years or something then fantastic but hey um, I, there was just no one out there who's actually done this before to my knowledge so here I am I hope this helps someone else and if you've got any questions just let me know all right catch ya